right, guys, we're going to have a look at uh, the Sadler textbook, uh, particularly chapter 8, where we're looking at the closest approach. So he's got three uh, examples there that we're going to go through. So the first one is this one here. So we've got a naval vessel. That's a boat. It travels at 20 kilometers per hour on a bearing of 05 degrees. Now there's a gun. It's probably on a hill 14 kilometers away from the vessel. Now that gun is on a bearing of 060 degrees. Now if the gun has a maximum range of 4 kilometers, does the vessel come in range of being hit? All right, so let's start to look at a diagram for this question, eh? Well, there's our north line. We need that so that we can look at our bearing. So here's our vessel. Now remember, from our vessel, it's traveling in a bearing of 40 degrees or 040 degrees. So there we go. That's the direction the vessel is traveling. Now we've also got that gun emplacement 14 kilometers away on a bearing of 60. So that's slightly beyond 40 there. So it's probably in about there, rough. Remember, this is not to scale. There we go, about 14 kilometers, and there's our gun there, eh? Now remember, our vessel is traveling at 40 degrees, so it's going to continue on that path. And we want to know the closest approach, so we want to know when that's a perpendicular. Now that's at 90 degrees. So if we can figure out that extra there, that's going to tell us the distance the boat or the vessel is away from the gun. So there's our 60 degrees, which means we've got 20 degrees there. Now you notice we've got a nice right angle triangle. What can we use? That's it, trigonometry. So let's call that the O, that's the H side or hypotenuse. Now we're going to use sine. 20 degrees is equal to X over 14. We get out our little calculator, rearrange this to make X the subject. We get X equals 14 times sine 20. So remember, we divide by that 14, so we put it on the other side, it becomes times by 14. And there we go. Calculate it, we get X equals 4.79 kilometers. Sweet. That means the boat's not going to get hit, eh? So remember, we've got to, we've got to put that answer down because otherwise we've just calculated something. We haven't answered it. Here we go. We'll not get hit. Okay, let's look at another example, eh? The second one. <clears throat> there are two oil tankers, A and B, such that B is situated 10 kilometers northeast of A. Now, if A maintains a speed of 11 kilometers per hour due north and B maintains a speed, of eight kilometers per hour due west, find the least distance of separation of A and B. So we want to find that distance, the smallest distance between the two oil tankers, eh? All right, so let's again, let's look at trying to draw this diagram. So let's do our north line. We want to do tanker A. We read the question. B is situated 10 kilometers northeast of A. So northeast, well, and northeast, that's right in the middle, so that's 45 degrees. There we go. And there's tanker B. Now that distance from there to there is also 10 kilometers, so remember that. So we've got 45 degrees there, which means we've got 45 degrees there. There's east, and there's, remember, that's our north. All right, so it maintains a speed of 11 kilometers due north. So that's A. There we go. That's, it's traveling in that direction. So that's 11 kilometers per hour. And then B... Well, that's traveling west. That means it's traveling that way, and it's traveling at 8 kilometers per hour. Well, this is a little bit harder because both boats are traveling. So what we need to do is we need to make one boat stationary. So we're going to look at um, A with respect to B. That means we're sitting on B, so we're going to make B stationary by applying a negative 8 kilometers per hour vector, which means we apply it to the other vector for boat A. So see what I've done there? All right, so we can have a velocity vector of a combined of that. So we can actually work out that velocity vector if you want. So remember, you know, we can go velocity of A, subtract away velocity of B. There's our eight kilometers per hour. Now remember, that's created a nice little right angle triangle because of the fact that it was north and west. All right, so we want to find, there's our little right angle triangle. We want to find the distance that's perpendicular distance, or x there. So in order to do that, we need the little angle inside our, our triangle. We need that angle there, theta. All right, so in order to find that, remember, we know that that whole big angle is 45. We want that little angle there. We've got a nice little right angle triangle. So we've got 8 and 11. That's O and A. We're going to use trig. Tan of that angle is equal to 8 over 11. So that's equal to 
tan inverse. Remember, we're going to remove that tan. It's going to become tan inverse. 8 divided by 11, and we calculate that to be 36 degrees. Now, remember that big angle is 45 degrees right from the north line. So we're going to go 45 take 36. That gives us 9 degrees. That means our angle inside that triangle is 9 degrees. So now we use trig again. There we go. That's going to be the O. That's going to be the H side. Now remember that distance from A to B was 10 kilometers. So we're going to have sine of 9 degrees is equal to X over 10. All right, so let's find X. X is going to be equal to 10 times sine of 9 degrees. All right, we'll get out our little calculator, do a couple calculations. And we're going to get x equals 1.56 kilometers and that's the least distance of separation between the two oil tankers sweet all right let's go have a look at another example way so this is the third example now 2 p.m on one afternoon the position vectors and velocity vectors of two ships a and b are as given below so remember this has got position vector and then velocity vector so we've got position vector and velocity vector. Now, if the two ships continue with these velocities, what will the minimum distance they are apart be? All right, so let's start looking at using a diagram to help us with this question. Eh? Remember, we don't have to draw things to scale all the time. We just need to get it roughly right. So let's look at our position vector of A. So our position vector of A, that's 10 long and 30 up. So let's just say it's roughly there. Our position vector of B is 40 long and 40 up. So, you know, roughly there, eh? Well, we can find the distance between A and B. That's not too hard. All right, that's just using our knowledge of uh, position vectors. So we know that uh, the vector of A to B, that's going to be the vector of B, subtract away the vector of A. So 40 take 10 gives you 30i, and 40 take 30 gives you 10j. So those are the i components and j components. Now I have a triangle here that says I've got 30 along and I've got 10 up. Well, that enables us to be able to go and find the distance between A and B, doesn't it? So the distance between A and B is going to be simply 30 squared plus 10 squared and find the value of that and then square root it. So there we go, we've got 30 squared plus 10 squared, square rooted, that's going to give us the distance, right? We can also use our knowledge of trigonometry here, guys. So remember, that's a right angle triangle, so we can actually find that angle theta there if we wanted to. Now, we can also find and look at the velocity vectors here and use these, eh? So we've got the velocity vector of B being minus 7i, there we go, it's traveling in that direction. And velocity vector of A, well, that's 5 along, 9 up. So it's roughly in that direction, eh? Well, that's sort of similar to our last problem, wasn't it? So we've got two velocity vectors. So let's apply a negative velocity vector and make A with respect to B. So we make B stationary. So what we're going to do is V of A subtract away V of B. So 5i subtract away negative 7. That gives us 12. So remember, negative, negative makes 12. So a 12i plus 9j. And that's going to produce our velocity vector of A with respect to B. So let's draw that. Now let's remember, we go 12 along and 9 up. So roughly 12 along, 9 up. Gives us a rough direction. There we go. Now that's 12 along and 9 up. So remember, we can create a nice little right angle triangle there if we want. So just remember that. There we go. That's the direction it's going to keep traveling in. And there's our perpendicular line from B. And we want to find the value of x there, which is the distance away from b. And that's going to be the closest distance it's going to be to b. Okay. So let's look at our velocity vector there. So remember, that's 12 along. That's 9 up. So we can use that because we've got a right angle triangle. We could use trigonometry if we wanted to. We'd use Pythagoras' theorem. So let's have a look. We want to find the little angle inside our triangle. So we know the big angle. We know angle theta there. And we want to find x. So there's the angle we want to find. So if we find this big angle here, subtract away theta, we're going to be left with that angle there, which means we can find x using trigonometry. 
All right, so let's use that approach, eh? So let's look at finding x. So we've got to use O and A. So that means we've got to use tan. So we're finding our angle there. Let's call it alpha. Okay, so tan of alpha is equal to, remember, 9 over 12. So that's O over A. That means alpha is equal to tan inverse 9 over 12, which equals 36.86 degrees. All right. I suppose now we can find the angle theta there. That gives us, you know, using trigonometry, tan as well. So tan of theta is equal to 10 over 30. That means theta is going to be tan inverse 10 over 30. That'll give us 18.43. Now that's going to give us the value there if we subtract the two. So we've got to go alpha, subtract theta. And that's going to end up with 18.43 degrees there when we subtract those. So now we use trigonometry to find x. So remember... That's our distance, 30 squared plus 10 squared square rooted. And we're going to use trigonometry, which means we're going to use O and H. So therefore, we're going to use sine of 18.43 degrees. And that's going to be equal to x over our distance there. Now, we can, we can write our distance as a value if you want. So we can calculate that. I think it comes out to be about 31.62. Let's just check. Yep. 31.62, and that's at kilometers. And now what we've got to do is we've got to multiply that 31.62 along with sine 18.43 to find our value of x. So we get a calculator out. We get x equals 9.99, which is approximately 10 kilometers. And there's our answer. All right, so not too bad. That's using vector components there. All the best.